Smart beta has been gaining a lot of traction because investors are not happy with the results of active managers. As has always been the case, active managers are hunting in the same territory as index funds, which means collectively they can't win. It also means that if you've got a winning active strategy, there has to be a loser on the other side of the trades. Now, in seeking better alternatives, ideas that don't go pure passive and that don't fall into the traps of conventional active management, Smart Beta has been on a roll. Uh, Fundamental Index, which we launched back in 0405, has wound up retaining dominant position within Smart Beta, but it also opened the door for a whole panoply of other ideas. Now, the simple fact is, if you're choosing a Smart Beta strategy, what are you going to choose? The strategy that has the best recent performance, the same way that people always used to choose active managers. If you choose strategies with the best performance, it's classic performance chasing. Performance chasing has three risks attached to it. Firstly, if you're buying what has performed best, it's now more expensive. So it per by performing best, it increases your confidence in future results and it increases the likelihood of disappointment in the years ahead. Furthermore, what's more expensive may mean revert, magnifying the downside. Now, within the smart beta arena, we're finding a lot of new strategies that we don't think are smart at all. It's interesting to note that past performance is a terrible uh, guide to future performance. The portion of past return that is troublesome is the return that comes from rising valuation levels. Say the stock market doubles in its P.E. ratio. Should you expect the same return that you earned as it was doubling its P.E. ratio? Of course not. The same thing applies to individual strategies. Quality and low volatility strategies are becoming extremely popular. Well, why are they popular? Because past returns have been brilliant. Why have past returns been brilliant? Because high quality companies and low volatility companies have been getting more expensive relative to the market. So the first thing investors need to do is to back out the portion of return that came from rising valuations. Once you do that, you're left with what might arguably be viewed as the, as the structural value add of the strategy. When you're looking at value strategies and momentum strategies, to cite two examples, there's lots of performance net of the changes in valuations. Once you back that out, you find some of these strategies, low volatility and quality being two examples, have very little left other than the rising valuations, which means that if they reverse course and begin to revert back to historic valuation levels relative to the market, they're going to underperform. The very strategies with the best three to five year past performance may turn out to be the worst subsequent three to five year future performance. We've recently done a white paper examining this closely and we find that relative valuation, whether a strategy is trading rich or cheap relative to its historic norm, is an enormously powerful predictor of future success for the strategy for those with patience and a willingness to look beyond a one or two year span. Longer term spans, three years, five years, ten years, it's an enormously powerful predictor. What it suggests is right now value strategies are trading very cheap. They're likely to perform better than their long term historic norms. Mm -hmm.